My name is Martin Rhodes. I teach political economy courses at the Joseph Corbell School of International Studies. One of those is on globalization, and I just want to take some perspectives from that course to say something about how coronavirus is affecting the international economy. So first of all, this is about supply chains, but what are supply chains? Supply chains are the national and international production networks um, that have resulted from outsourcing production in the world economy since the 1990s. They account for almost everything we consume today, autos, consumer electronics, clothing, food, and importantly, pharmaceutical drugs. They account for the greater proportion, around 60 to 70% of international trade. That's intermediate goods flowing within company networks. They make traditional trade statistics and trade policy redundant. We can no longer accurately measure the value or origin of products traded globally. And tariffs designed to hurt one country, e.g. China, end up hurting other countries and their companies as well, including US companies and their consumers. So old-fashioned protectionism no longer works. And as COVID-19 shows, they also create new vulnerabilities by creating choke points in the form of supply chain disruptions in the global economy. What is the supply chain in terms, in real terms? Take a look at Apple, 150 companies, 150, 200 companies are involved in making components for iPhone. Um, 150 of those are in Asia, only 44 in the United States. This is something that the current Trump administration hates. Wilbur Ross argued that globalization is out of control recently at a speech in Oxford in the UK saying that it takes 200 suppliers in 43 countries on six continents to make an iPhone. His complaint reveals a real uh, phenomenon, that is the incredible dispersion and fragmentation of, fra of, of production uh, across borders. Drug production works the same way. Three phases of drug production illustrated in this slide can be um, diced up and dis distributed internationally across different countries, which is the world we live in today. The US is particularly exposed to international disruption because of its dependence on China. Only 14% of the sites that turn biochemical ingredients into active uh, forms of drugs are in the United States. 80% of plants that make active ingredients for the US are abroad, mainly in China. If you look at the top of the slide, it shows you the proportions of Pharmaceuticals that are imported, 95% of US imports of ibuprofen, 91% of hydrocortisone, and so on. One of the results of this is supply, supply chain disruption. If you look at the diagram, this shows the dependency of the world's largest 1,000 companies or the suppliers um, and their facilities on COVID quarantine areas. In drugs, something like 1,500 facilities are located in. COVID-19 quarantine areas. In automotive, industrial, heavy machinery, it's even worse. So maybe 3,000 facilities are in COVID-19 quarantine areas. No wonder that 75% of companies reported in February and March some kind of supply chain disruption. 44% of those companies didn't have a plan to deal with disruption. Thankfully, pharmaceutical companies have some of the largest inventories, giving them some eight months or more of stocks before shortages hit. The other thing that happens, though, is that trade policy conducted by, uh, in, with old-fashioned instruments no longer works at all. With Trump trade war tariffs on China, imports of products subject to 25% tariffs fell by an average of 16% in 2017-19. Mouth, nose protection equipment, i.e. the masks that are important for health workers dealing with the pandemic, are down 20%. Uh, year on year. That diagram, if you want to take, spend some time looking at it, shows you the kinds of medical equipment that has been adversely affected in terms of supply from China due to the US trade war. So in sum, this is a very difficult situation. Uh, companies are finding their supplies choked by supply chain disruption. Uh, the Trump government finds that its trade policy is backfiring in in various ways. These are some of the issues that um, I address in my course. Uh, these are some of the issues that are important for uh, students of political economy these days uh, to have uh, to deeply understand. Thank you.